Hey everybody, this is Tree from treeoflogic.com and today I'm going to give you the complete breakdown of Sean Talcum X King. As many of you know, Sean King has gotten rich at the expense of gullible black people by pretending to be an oppressed minority. He learned early in life that the best way to scam black people is by pretending to be one of them. Sean King knows that black victimization is big business and as a white man pretending to be black, he was able to exploit this narrative to the max while receiving millions of dollars and endless media coverage. So I'm going to take the time to explain to you in detail the backstory behind Sean King and you'll learn why he's known to conservatives as Talcum X. So let's begin. On September the 17th, 1979, Naomi K. Flemings and Jeffrey Wayne King gave birth to their son, Jeffrey Sean King. This white middle class family live in Versailles, Kentucky in a respectable quiet neighborhood in the suburbs. Since his parents named him after his biological father, they called Jeffrey Sean King by his middle name Sean instead of his first name Jeffrey as to not confuse the two in the household. In the beginning, Sean King grew up like a typical white child in a middle class neighborhood. But when he reached high school, he embraced black hip hop culture like many other white teenagers during his time and thus transformed himself into a wigger. To enhance his new ethnic identity at Woodford County High, he began dating a black female by the name of Ray. The two would eventually marry and have several kids together as years progressed on. During his senior year, Sean King applied for a scholarship called the Sons of Oprah, which is a full scholarship given to young black men with exceptional grades from low-income communities. Sean King seized the opportunity to deceive Oprah and the scholarship committee by pretending to be a black male. He was later awarded the scholarship, thus depriving a real black male student of this rare opportunity. Now that Sean has physically transformed himself into a black male, is dating a black girl, and received a black scholarship to a historical black college, he needed one more attribute to complete his new black image. What is that, you may ask? Street cred. Now that Sean King was based in Atlanta, Georgia, which is eight hours away from Kentucky, it was safe for him to establish a fictitious story about him being a victim of hate crime. After all, no one in Atlanta was going to travel all the way to Kentucky to fact check him, so his plan was perfect. Sean King established his role as a black victim of racism by sharing the following story. At Woodford County High, I was harassed daily by groups of racist rednecks who attended my school until one day I was viciously attacked by 12 of them during my freshman year. Days before, they tried to run me over in a pickup truck on school property. But since they missed, they decided to finish the job on the following day. So on March the 1st, 1995, while walking to band class, 12 racist rednecks savagely beat and stomped me with steel-toed boots while calling me racist names. The beating was so bad that it was the first registered hate crime in the state of Kentucky. Sean King said that the 12 rednecks beat him so bad that he was clinging to life. He suffered fractures to his face, ribs, and back. Due to the severity of his beating, he required a series of three spinal surgeries for the next two years. The injuries resulting from his beating forced him to miss more than a year and a half of school. Sean King said that his body never fully recovered and he fell into a deep depression and at times 
wanted to die. Now, this is some bullshit gravy that black folks sopped up with a biscuit and Sean King achieved the street cred he was looking for. But thanks to the reporters at Breitbart News, his street credibility was demolished in 2015. Milo Yiannopoulos and Vicky Pate were able to obtain the police report from that incident and were shockingly surprised to discover that everything Sean King said was a lie. Vicky was also able to obtain a copy of Sean's birth certificate, which states that Sean King's race was listed as white. So let's debunk each lie told by Sean King one by one. Lie number one, Sean King said that he was attacked by 12 racist rednecks. According to the police report, Sean was in a fight with only one student. Written testimonies from other students and teachers who witnessed the fight verify this. Lie number two, Sean King said that he was savagely beaten to the point where he was clinging on to life. The police report stated that Sean King was taken to the hospital by his mother, not an ambulance. While there, he gave a verbal confession of what happened at his school. Sean was released by his doctor under the care of his mother several hours later that day. Lie number three. Sean King said that he suffered fractures to his face, ribs, and back, along with receiving surgery. Police reports, along with statements from his doctor, denied this story and stated that Sean King had minor injuries, which consist of an abrasion to his right cheek and complaints of rib and back pain. Hospital records confirm his condition at that time. No x-rays were given and no surgeries were performed. Lie number four. Sean King said that the incident was listed as Kentucky's first hate crime. Detective Keith Broughton, who was the assigned investigator to the case, said that the incident was never classified as a hate crime. It was simply a brief fight between two white students. And none of the sources that keep track of hate crimes, such as the FBI, have records of any hate crime occurring in that city. Lie number five. Sean King said that he missed a year and a half of school due to those injuries. School records show that Sean King had near to perfect attendance during his sophomore and junior year at Woodford County High. If he in fact missed a year and a half of school, he wouldn't have qualified to steal the Oprah scholarship from a deserving black male student. Basically, the police report states that on March the 1st, 1995, Sean King was assaulted by another student. Both students began to fight. A teacher broke them up and took them both to the principal's office. The parents of both students arrived at the school and took custody of their sons. Sean's mother drove him to Woodford Memorial Hospital where he was treated for minor injuries before being released. By the way, the medical records and the police report list Sean King's race as white. Even though Sean was labeled the victim in the report, there was a good reason for him getting punched in the face. Based upon confessions of other witnesses, along with the girl who attended the same high school, it was Sean who started this whole thing. Their written statements provided to the police indicated that the fight was over a girl. The written testimony stated that the assault was over a dispute Sean King had with a girl who owed him $8 for accidentally breaking one of his CDs. Sean King confronted the girl and demanded that she pay him back the $8 immediately. Witnesses said that they saw Sean King push the girl up against the wall and then threatened to break her neck over the $8 she owed him. She was so traumatized over the entire incident that she left school and went to her home for safety. 
The following day, her ex-boyfriend confronted Sean about the incident and then punched him in the face. And that's when the fight ensued. Links to all of these reports are available in the description box. So not only does Sean King pretend to be black, steals a scholarship intended for a black male student, but he also hits females. What a piece of shit. Now, when Sean King was confronted about his race in 2015, he did something which proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that he was indeed a white male. He threw his mother under the bus. During the year 2015, conservative news outlets exposed Sean King as being a Rachel Dolezal 2.0 with certified documents proving that Sean King was indeed white, not black. Sean changed his tune and said that he was biracial. He stated that his mother told him when he was five years old that the man listed on his birth certificate, Jeffrey Wayne King, is not his biological father. After weeks of avoiding the issue, Sean White Man and Nigga Face King released the following statement to the public. I refuse to speak in detail about the nature of my mother's past or her sexual partners, and I am gravely embarrassed to even be saying this now, but I have been told for most of my life that the white man on my birth certificate is not my biological father and that my actual biological father is a light-skinned black man. My mother and I have discussed her affair. She was a young woman in a bad relationship and I have no judgment. This has been my lived reality for nearly 30 of my 35 years on earth. I am not ashamed of it or who I am. Never that. But I was advised by my pastor nearly 20 years ago that this was not a mess of my doing and it was not my responsibility to fix it. All of my siblings and I have different parents. I'm actually not even sure how many siblings I have. Now listen, say what you want about black men, but one thing they would never do is call their mama a hoe. I don't care if she has a pimp, dress in skimpy clothes, and stay out all night long hanging on the streets. A black man will never call his mama a hoe. A sexual therapist? Sure. But a hoe? (laughs) Absolutely not. Let me tell you why this story is bullshit. If a white woman is going to cheat on her husband with a black man, that bastard isn't going to be light skinned. You see, white women love their men like they love their meat. Dark. Why in the hell would they pick a Colin Kaepernick when they can have a Reggie Bush? It is common knowledge, especially in the black community, that white women go for dark-skinned black men, while black women go for light-skinned black men. This is a known fact. Also, why would your mama volunteer information about being a hoe, especially to a young child? Why would an adult tell a five-year-old boy that she committed adultery? Why would any middle-class white woman psychologically scar her son like this out of the blue? Most women, especially white women, would take this secret to the grave. But your mother felt the need to confide this secret to you at the age of five? Here's another point I want to add. After Sean was allegedly told by his mother that the man he knew as his father was not his biological father, Sean was content with just that information and went on with his life as normal. He never once asked for the man's name, location, or the identity of any of his family members. 
All his mother told him was the race of his biological father, and Sean was content with just that little information. Now let me ask you something. Does that sound realistic to you? Any child who was told this hidden secret will go out and try to find his real father. They would either hire a detective or seek out one of his closest relatives, but not Sean King. Sean was told that his biological father is a light-skinned black man and that's all the information he needed. This lie was so outrageous that a black conservative group offered $25,000 for Sean King to take a DNA test proving that Jeffrey Wayne King is not his biological father. But surprisingly, Sean refused to take the test. Sean King is excellent at marketing himself. He deceitfully disguised his whiteness on social media by using black and white photos as his profile pictures and darken all the other pictures of him in color. You can see this by going to his Twitter profile. Oh, by the way, when Sean read my tweet that I was going to do an exposed video on him, he blocked me on Twitter, and rightfully so. Why would he subject himself to a pile of truth bombs from a black woman on the right? But anyway, I want to draw your attention to this particular picture right here. Now, when you hear Sean King share his story about being viciously beaten by 12 racist rednecks, you immediately think that this is the picture from that event. (coughs) Wrong. This picture was taken from a car accident that involved him and his wife back in 2003. This is eight years after his fictitious story. Sean was driving down the interstate when he hit a patch of black ice and lost control of his vehicle. His car crossed the median and crashed into an ongoing truck head on. Even though his face hit the windshield, he didn't suffer any broken bones. I had the unfortunate experience of hitting black ice which caused me to crash head on into a giant oak tree. The glass from the windshield sliced my face up so bad that I look like a female version of Deadpool. My car accident occurred in 2004, which is one year after Sean's accident. But guess what? I don't have pictures from this accident plastered all over my social media platforms, but Sean does. You see, Sean King proudly includes this picture on his Twitter and Facebook profiles in order to validate his fictitious hate crime beating. Naive black people see this picture and automatically assume that this picture was taken from the incident where he claimed to have been beaten by 12 racist rednecks. Sean never tells his followers that this picture is from his car accident from 2003. Instead, he lets people assume it's from the fabricated racist beating he received in 1995. Just like the Young Turks, Sean King is a professional at lies and deception. When it comes to all malicious and evil things that Sean King has done, the rabbit hole gets deeper and deeper. If I took the time to expose all his nasty secrets, this video would be 12 hours long. Sean King has been accused of plagiarizing, stealing millions of dollars from black activist organizations, and a charity he sponsored for the victims of Haiti. In addition to a long list of fake online charities and crowdfundings. In conclusion, Sean King is a white opportunist posing as a black or biracial man in order to gain honor, fame, and fortune at the expense of gullible black people. Sean King proves that there are more benefits and privileges to being black than white, 
thus dismantling the default white privilege argument most liberals love to use. To me, Sean King appears to be the white Jesus of black activist movements, and silly Negroes are happy to follow his lead. By pretending to be an oppressed minority, white people like Sean can scam the black community out of millions of dollars while simultaneously presenting themselves to the world as professional victims. Sean King is a fraud, and everything he touches turns to shit. One thing you can say about Sean King is that he always associates himself with racially destructive organizations like Black Lives Matter and the Young Turks. When it comes to capitalizing on the ignorance of black people, Talcum X will always be at the front of the line. This is Tree from treeoflogic.com. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Later, taters!